Here we go. Welcome to the first of many videos specific to the airsoft business and retail world. Haha! <laughs> uh, for those of you just checking this out, assuming this is your first video, because probably one day this video will get so big, oh my god, but whatever. Uh, I am James. Hi, how's it going? I'm the operations manager. I'm also the chief executive officer for True Aim Incorporated, which is a airsoft field and retail shop based in Roseville, California, which is a Northern California area. The unfortunate part of the airsoft business world is there's no such thing as training. And by training, I mean standardized training across the board. There's no certification course, nothing. Manufacturers don't really offer this. Uh, wholesale retailers don't really, no one really helps out their employees. You just sort of get hired and hopefully you know something about airsoft, but you probably don't know anything about sales. So good luck, you're gonna learn it as you go along. Eh, maybe someone's gonna be nice enough to show you like, hey, here's how you actually sell this stuff. Top three questions you should be asking when you are selling an airsoft gun when you're a sales associate. Number one, is this your first airsoft gun? You're gonna laugh at that, but right there in that one question, based off the customer's response, you're gonna figure out kind of what type of player they are. For instance, a new player, someone that's brand new to Airsoft, is gonna have vastly different spending habits within Airsoft than someone who's been playing for three or four years. So it's very common, based on the, ad the survey analytics I've done, someone's first gun is usually no more than about 200, 220 bucks. So it's mostly your Lancers, your GNGs, your other you know stuff. Uh, and then their second gun is usually like 300 plus dollars. So what typically happens in this example I'm uh, talking about, you buy a G&G, &G, like say maybe like a, a combat machine or a Raider 2.0 or a Raider short. You play with that for, with a while, cool. You want something with a little more oomph to it. You upgrade to something like maybe uh, Crytek or you want to get more specific and go to like the KWA, like the AEG3 uh, guns or maybe you get like a GBBR, you get more specific. When you ask a customer, is this your first gun? Their answer is going to save you a bunch of time because if they say yes, you're probably not going to show them like a custom Polar Star M4 loadout. You're probably going to take them to the more like $200 and under price range of guns. The second question is really based off the first one. So if that first one, a customer tells you that they already own guns, cool. Second question you need to ask someone, what kind of guns do you already own? As I've already explained, if they already own a low tier gun, as far as like a G&G &G combat machine or something in like that 220 and under mark, most likely they are looking to upgrade to a $300 plus gun. So that's when you can start doing, even with the G&Gs, you could go up to like maybe a G&G &G Predator. You can look at like the SSGs. If you want to do some of the specialty stuff like what KWA has with their different AEG systems. If you want to go the Crytek route. For someone that already owns an Airsoft gun, you can give them some of the higher tier stuff because they already have a concept of these products. Most likely they're going to tell you what they want anyway. Sometimes they won't. I have had players buy guns off my recommendations and off the recommendations of my staff. That's very common in retail because to a point, most players, they know about their gun kinda, and that's usually it. Their concept of additional airsoft products is so limited. And if you've already built a decent rapport with that customer, like if it's a return customer or if your shop already has a great reputation within the community, there's a really good chance they will buy products based off of your personal recommendations if you know how to ask the right questions and I don't want to say give the right answers, but answers those questions in a way that helps them navigate this path they're going down. The third most important question you can ask a customer, and I think it's the most underrated question, granted the caveat to this is it doesn't always apply, so that's fair. What fields are you playing at? Let's look at places like Southern California where a lot of those indoor fields are 350 fps and lower and in order to play something that's above 350 fps you have to go to an outdoor field that's pretty common in the airsoft industry so you need to make sure you know the rules of those surrounding fields because you don't want to sell a kid a gun they can't use at the field they're going to if you work at a shop in la and you sell a gun to a kid that plays tax city and it's a Crytek that shoots 400 FPS out of the box, realistically it's shooting four or five out of the box. 
they're going to bring that gun back and go, I can't use this at this field, man. Come on. They're relying on your expert knowledge as someone that works in the industry to help them navigate their spending habits. Now, I say that third one might not necessarily apply in a lot of places because you'll have areas like maybe the Midwest where there's only one field in a four hour driving radius. The other reason why sometimes that gets underrated is if you're working, if you're a sales associate at a field, you already know where they're at. You can still ask that question to make sure that they're going to get the most out of that product. Oh, you can use this gun at that field also. I can. I'm now getting more value for my purchase. This is great. They don't really understand about the whole FPS limits thing. They just know about being able to play and not being able to play. As long as you can effectively explain the value of a product to a customer within the confines of their spending habits or within their, you know, their budget or their limitations or whatever, it's not that hard to sell guns. I was a cop for eight years. I was in the army for 12. Now all of a sudden I know all these things about airsoft retail. If I can figure this out, you ain't got no excuse. I'm gonna help you. Kaber, who the f are you, nerd?